Next on PIJN News, Dr. Chaps reports on these important issues. The governor of Virginia declares an emergency because there are peaceful gun protesters outside the Richmond Capitol. Today we interview Sheriff Richard Vaughn from Grayson County defending your gun rights. Former Navy Chaplain Gordon James Klingenschmidt took a stand to defend religious freedom by daring to pray publicly in Jesus' name. Now he helps you by reporting the news, discerning the spirits, and praying the scriptures. Would you pray with us? Here's Dr. Chaps. God bless you in Jesus' name. My name is Chaplain Gordon James Klingenschmidt, Dr. Chaps, and you're watching PIJN News. On this show, we like to do three things. We report the news, we discern the spirits, and we pray the scriptures in Jesus' name. Are you ready to pray the news with us? On today's show, we have a live interview with the Sheriff of Grayson County, Virginia. You know, the sheriffs, uh, many of them, not just this one, have been defending the Second Amendment of the Constitution, in particular in Virginia, where gun rights are under attack by not only the liberal legislature, where Democrats control, I think, both the House and Senate, the Assembly and the Senate, but also the governor of Virginia, Ralph Northam, has actually declared a state of emergency in fear of what became a nonviolent, peaceful protest by gun enthusiasts. Welcome to the program, Sheriff Richard Vaughn of Grayson County, Virginia. You're appearing in uniform, which means you are able to speak in somewhat of an official capacity. What is your? What are your duties there as elected sheriff of Grayson County? We are a full service law enforcement agency. We do primary law enforcement uh, for 16,000 citizens. We have 450 square miles. And during General Assembly, we travel up to the state capitol and uh, we lobby for our law enforcement needs and also for the rights of our citizens. And this year, specifically our Second Amendment rights. Well, thank you for doing that. I'm uh, not surprised, but I understand that lobbying the legislature can be an official duty of a sheriff because you are elected by your county people, your county voters want you to represent their interests when state government tries to conflict with county government. Uh, have you seen a conflict between those two levels of government? Absolutely, you know, we were one of the first counties in Virginia to declare us as a Second Amendment sanctuary. It was the most uh, attended board meeting that I could ever remember having. We had almost a thousand people there. We had uh, a number of speakers and it unanimously passed that Grayson County would be a Second Amendment sanctuary. Now we have 105 localities across Virginia that are Second Amendment sanctuaries. You know, we're in the Bible Belt. We're in Southwest Virginia. We border North Carolina to the South and Tennessee to the West. It's a mountainous county, but uh, we were all raised here to, to hunt and to shoot, uh, to respect others, respect guns, but most importantly, to go to church and put God first. <laughs> well, I'm with you on that. I'm, I'm trying to picture a map of Virginia, of course, on the ocean, you have DC at the top, Virginia Beach at the bottom. Somewhere in the middle, you have Richmond, which is along uh, Highway 95 there. Uh, and then way out west is Grayson County on the border of Tennessee and, and, and uh, Carolina. Uh, have, has your county ever considered joining West Virginia? There's, there's a whole movement of some counties that, that wish they weren't, but I guess you're constitutionally eligible to do that sometime. Uh, we are, and actually West Virginia has introduced some legislation this year to allow uh, counties in Southwest Virginia to join up with West Virginia. You know, I think it was back in 1863, we were all one state, but West Virginia was not uh, happy with the way their tax money was being spent and, spent and how things were run up in Richmond, and they decided uh, to split off and form their own state. So that could be an alternative uh, later down the road because I think we line up a lot better with the state of West Virginia and the state of Tennessee than we do with Northern Virginia. Well, Northern Virginia seems to be the problem. That is the liberal bastion around Washington, D.C., where a lot of bureaucrats live. The government is growing around Washington, D.C., and so uh, Democrats have taken over the blue counties, but you guys are a red county, sort of a lot of Republican voters out there in the mountains, and you love defending the Constitution. Why is the Second Amendment important to you personally? Well, for people to be able to adequately defend themselves uh, in their household, I think that's one reason that Grayson County is a great place to live. It's because 98% of the households here uh, have firearms and they know how to use them. 
You know, it, it's our God-given right to be able to protect ourselves. Now, the Second Amendment reaffirms that, but we strongly believe that this is a, a God-given right that we're standing up uh, to defend. Well, I like that theory, uh, but there have to be people who defend that right, right? The Constitution doesn't defend itself. I was a 20-year veteran, former Navy chaplain, former state representative. I many, many times in my life swore an oath to defend the Constitution. Do you consider that oath part of your uh, duties or is it more important you defend the Virginia Constitution or the voters of Grayson County? Well, we're, we're gonna stand up for the voters of Grayson County, but we're gonna to have to be in alignment with the Constitution. And if there's any state laws that are proposed or passed that conflict with the United States Constitution, then we're not going to enforce those laws. So there's been a lot of debate in Colorado about so-called red flag laws, where local county sheriffs are called upon to seize people's private property. If they are deemed a, a threat or maybe an old girlfriend files a complaint, oh, my old boyfriend has a gun. And the sheriff is called upon to go and enforce a seizure order from the governor. Uh, is that something that could happen in Virginia? And would you enforce that kind of order from the Virginia governor, Ralph Northam? Well, it's, uh, it's one of their proposed uh, legislations this year. You know, the red flag law, uh, they think that if we go out and we seize their firearms, that it's going to uh, prevent that person from being able to do something that is unsafe when it's not. You know, we already have laws on the books here in Virginia. It's called an emergency custody order. We can go out and take people into custody that are, that are in mental health crisis. They are evaluated. And if they are found to need more medical attention, they are held for up to 72 hours and then a special justice hears that petition. Now, if he dismisses that petition, then of course they could stop at a Walmart or a gun shop on the way home and they could buy a firearm. But if they sustain that petition and they send them for further medical purposes, then they lose their gun rights. So it's a whole lot easier to lock up the person that's in mental health crisis than it is to try to keep that person from guns and other weapons. Because if we seize their guns, they can steal, call a friend, they can break in a house, they can go to a drug dealer or the black market, and they can get a gun. So we feel like that that, gun, that policy is just completely ineffective. I think you're right, and if such a law were passed in Virginia, it would hurt law-abiding citizens, but not the criminals who are gonna break the law anyway. Let's take a short break. When I come back, I will ask Sheriff Grayson about the recent protests in Richmond. This is PIJN News, defending your religious freedom. Dr. Chaps will be right back. I'm Dr. Chaps. You know, some people are worried that we're losing our country, but they ask, how can we take a stand? We have produced now these two effective resources for you, a DVD video series and a book. Yours for a suggested donation of just $50, and we will offer you four videos on this disc to teach you how to become an effective Christian activist. For example, how did I send five million petitions to Congress? How did we organize and change bad laws or policies in 13 states? How did I run and win a seat in the Colorado legislature? We will also offer you this 30-day prayer manual, How to Liberate the World in 30 Days. They're both yours for a suggested donation of just $50. Visit our website, PrayInJesusName.org, or write to the address on your screen, or better yet, pick up the phone and call us at 866-O-B-E-Y-G-O-D. You can learn the easy steps to take back your country. Call us today. How can you discern the thoughts in your own mind from the thoughts that come to you from the Holy Spirit, or from angels, or from invisible demons. I'm Dr. Chaps, and you've seen us on this show talk about the gift of discerning of spirits. How can you discern the thoughts that come to you? How do you know to learn to hear the voice of God and discern that from the demonic voice which tempts us to sin? Well, this is an important skill, and it will change your ministry. It'll change your life which is why we've created a 17-part video Bible study on a four-disc DVD set that we would like to send to you and your church and your family and your small group. This important Bible study series goes through Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. How did Jesus discern the spirits? How did the Apostle Paul discern the spirits? What does the Old Testament say 
about demons and the Holy Spirit and angels. We're offering a discount today while supplies last. It used to be $99. Now it's just a suggested donation of $50. You get the entire four disc set and you learn how to discern the Holy Spirit, angels and demons, every mention in the Bible. Call us at 866-Obey-God. Again, that's 866-O-B-E-Y-G-O-D. Or visit our website or write to the address on your screen. You can learn to discern the spirits. Defending your religious freedom, here is Dr. Chaps. Welcome back, I'm joined by Sheriff Richard Vaughn from Grayson County, Virginia. Uh, sorry, I called you Sheriff Grayson, but you're Sheriff Vaughn. And <laughs> I just wanna uh, get a feel for the recent protests that, now this is January of 2020, right? Uh, that were held in Richmond, Virginia, totally peaceful, all constitutional gun enthusiasts defending their Second Amendment rights by peacefully marching on the governor's mansion. But Governor Ralph Northam was very concerned about this. He declared a state of emergency beforehand. Uh, he was threatening to arrest people, uh, hired extra law enforcement, and there was nothing that came of this. We, were you surprised? I wasn't surprised at all. And I, I, me and two of my deputies, I believe, were the only ones that were actually there in uniform, uh, mingling uh, with the crowd and talking to these individuals. And, you know, there were plenty of officers out in the perimeter, but I never at one time felt uh, unsafe. Uh, these people that traveled up from Florida and Pennsylvania and all the way across the, the state of Virginia were really good, upstanding people, and they were there to stand up uh, for their rights. I, I do not agree with declaring a, a state of emergency for that and putting a fence around our Capitol building. Now, anytime you have a rally of that size, no matter what uh, you're rallying for, you're going to have a small percentage of people that uh, could potentially cause a problem. You know, just like the three individuals that were arrested up in Maryland just uh, prior to the event. So you have to prepare for the worst and, and hope for the best. And it was one of the greatest uh, rallies that I have ever been involved with. Well, it looks like uh, a well-regulated militia uh, which is mentioned in the Constitution, showed up and they were peaceful and, and they regulated themselves without incident. So maybe big government is not required for uh, people like us, conservatives who know how to uh, keep the peace. There's a quote here from a Virginia state senator, Amanda Chase of District 11, who warned that Governor Ralph Northam was, was being overbearing in some way and she said this, uh, I am posting this knowing the governor of Virginia has declared a state of emergency in our state. I want you to be aware of how we are being set up. Does the Patriot Act ring a bell? Does National Defense Authorization Act ring a bell? Um, what do you think she might be getting at and, and was the governor trying to set anybody up? It appears to me that this is just gonna be a slippery slope because there's similar bills in the House and the Senate. They let Senate Bill 16 off of the docket uh, in, in the Senate uh, committee meeting, but there's still a House bill that's got some very strong language in it that would ban high capacity magazines, that would ban the transfer of assault weapons. And, you know, they're referring to an Arma Light 15 rifle as an assault weapon. We all know that's a, a 22 caliber. It's not much more than a squirrel gun. It's definitely not a weapon of war, like some of them are saying. And uh, they feel like that that gun uh, is, is threatening, but, but trust me, I've been doing this for 25 years and it's definitely not the gun. We need to lock up the violent offenders. We need to have stiffer sentences for those that commit uh, felonies and we need to have more funding uh, for mental health uh, uh, services. Yes, and I think mental health treatments are uh, important. They're certainly available for veterans or people suffering with PTSD. Um, I, I think the medical community and the law enforcement community need to and often do work hand in hand to make sure that people are properly admitted for evaluation, especially if they're suicidal or heaven forbid, homicidal. Uh, a lot of times people can be talked down from the brink. And yet the legislature in Virginia, when they initiated Senate Bill 16 and then later revoked Senate Bill 16, they weren't really talking about mental health. They were talking about literally limiting certain kinds of guns, what they call assault rifles. Well, well, any kind of rifle might be labeled an assault rifle uh, or limiting the number of bullets in a magazine. I think uh, their proposal was 10, Colorado law now only allows 15. Uh, so what about a 16 round magazine that would have been banned by this law? Are you glad that Senate Bill 16 was revoked or is it just gonna be replaced by moderate or similar gun bills? Or gun bills. 
Well, we're getting ready to enter crossover when the Senate bills go to the House and the House goes to the Senate, and they can make amendments on these bills all the way up until the floor vote. So we're still watching these bills very closely. And, you know, why are we telling our citizens that they cannot have a 30-round magazine? I mean, uh, who knows how many rounds you might have to have to be able to defend yourself in the home. Uh, just a couple of weeks ago, there was a case down in Georgia where two armed intruders uh, were committing a home invasion, and the homeowner came out with an AR-15 rifle. He was able to kill one of them and injure the other, and then he got shot himself. But he was able to save his life and, and the life of his family. We have talked to people that have been lobbying that are disabled. You know, if, if you're disabled and you're in a wheelchair and you're home alone during uh, the day and someone breaks in on you, you've got to be able to defend yourself. Well, you are uh, a strong advocate for the citizen's right to self-govern. Uh, if we are able as private citizens to respond faster uh, for example, we just interviewed people in the Texas church shooting who were able to respond faster than waiting six or seven minutes after a 911 call for law enforcement to show up. Does that make your job easier or are you more concerned about people uh, who, are, who are concealed carry or, or self-defending? Are they gonna endanger people by doing so? No, Grayson County is a mountainous county. We have 450 square miles. Some places of the county, it takes us 30 to 40 or 45 minutes to be able to respond to. And if you're not adequately prepared and armed in the home, we're not gonna be able to help you. We are public safety. Our citizens need to be able to take care of themselves for several minutes before we're able to, uh, to even be there. So it's very important for people to uh, uh, protect their Second Amendment rights and also uh, to be able to defend themselves for ever how long it takes. Do you have a concealed carry weapons permit program in our county here in El Paso uh, County, Colorado Springs? The sheriff actually signed my, what I'm gonna call a militia card, it's not really that, but uh, to allow me to concealed carry. Do you have a similar program in Grayson County? Uh, we do, we have the conceal uh, weapons permit that we issue, it's only $15. We do not charge a fee for that. We do not require fingerprinting. Uh, basically, if they complete a hunter safety course or an online concealed carry course, uh, then they can bring the certificate into the clerk of circuit court, make application, there's a quick break background check, and they have their license within two weeks. Our population's just a little over 15,000, and I think we have over 3,000 concealed weapon permit holders. So that is definitely one of the reasons that Grayson County is a, a safe place to live. Well, that sounds like a well-regulated like militia well to me. Militia. Let's take a short break. When we come back, I'll ask Sheriff Richard Vaughn about the 2A program and being a sanctuary county for Second Amendment rights after this. Giving you a megaphone in Washington, D.C. Dr. Chaps will be right back. Reading today's headlines, doesn't it seem sometimes like the world is unreal? We hear about rumors of wars and we see legislative and cultural battles here in America. But where is our hope? I think it's in the gospel of Jesus Christ. We're offering now a, a DVD series led by family ministry leader Vince Dacchioli, Real Christianity in an Unreal World. It behooves us to really understand what does it mean to be relevant as a Christian and to be real and to spread the gospel in a way to where more and more people will be in, will embrace it and move yep. in the right direction. We can send you the entire DVD series, which is three-part teaching with Vince and a bonus of my personal testimony for a suggested donation of just $30 if you call now at 866-Obey-God or write to the address on your screen or visit PrayInJesusName.org. We want to rush you this important teaching to ground your faith in real Christianity. What's at stake in this election? It's not about two candidates. It's about two different futures for America. In his new book, best-selling author Stephen E. Strang brings you an inside look at today's political climate in God, Trump, and the 2020 election. Find out what it means for Christians and for the future of America if Donald Trump loses the 2020 election. Find out what it means if he wins. Strang explores how God has used and will continue to use Trump to make a difference in America. Since the days of our founding fathers, God has led this nation to be the beacon of light and hope for the world. 
America has always supported those who spread the gospel, but that could change in the matter of one election. In God, Trump, and the 2020 election, Strang brings you an articulate, impassioned, apologetic about why all Christians must support this controversial president. Learn why the destiny of America is riding on his election. What's at stake? Everything. God, Trump, and the 2020 election. Why we must win. And what's at stake for Christians if he loses by Stephen E. Strang. Published by Frontline and available soon at bookstores and online. Stay tuned for the end of our show to learn how to partner with this ministry. Here's Dr. Chaps. Welcome back, I'm Dr. Chaps, joined for one last segment by Sheriff Richard Vaughn of Grayson County in Southwestern Virginia. Sheriff, I wanna thank you personally for putting your life on the line and, and your deputies and everyone in your department who serves in uniform is taking a risk. I wore a military uniform for 20 years. I think I know a little bit about what you do, uh, but but you're, do, you're going one step beyond. You are being an advocate for your citizens and their right to defend themselves. Uh, why do you run for office and put yourself through all this? Well, you know, like I said earlier, my dad has had a federal firearms license since back in the 1960s. We were all raised to, to hunt and, and to shoot. And, you know, even when I was in high school back in the 80s, uh, schools were closed on the first day of school so children could go deer hunting with, with their family. It, it, it's our heritage, and that was instilled into me as an early age. And now and working in law enforcement, I see the importance of it. And, you know, men like you, Dr. Chaps, who fought for our freedom and gave us this right, now it's up to us to, to help protect those rights. I think you're doing that with, uh, you have my admiration. I wonder, there, we hear about this 2A, 2A, uh, and the sanctuary counties, uh, is it something a county ordinance was passed by your county commissioners or how is Grayson County different from non 2A counties? The Board of Supervisors passed a resolution uh, to declare Grayson County a Second Amendment sanctuary. And then uh, me, the sheriff, as a constitutional officer, I also issued a proclamation that we would not enforce any uh, gun control laws that are unconstitutional. And like I said, there's over 105 of those localities uh, across the state. And you know, our leaders in Richmond, our delegates and legislators, they should be listening to the people and, and do what the majority wants to do. And I know that the, uh, the Democrats won the majority in the House and the, the Senate last year, and they talked about gun reform. Even Governor Norman called a special session last summer, and and that uh, only lasted about an hour and a half. They then pushed those bills over to the Virginia Crime Commission, who completed a study, but they did not give them enough time to adequately complete the study. So their recommendation was not even finished. So why don't we just push these bills aside, give it back to the Virginia Crime Commission, let them do a proper study, and then sit down with law enforcement across the state and make some good educated decisions and not let our emotions make those decisions, but let's do it on evidence-based practices. I mean, you look at New York, you look at Chicago, at the uh, the gun bans that they have in place up there, some of the stiffest in the nation. And, and that is also where the highest crime rates are at and some of the highest homicide rates. So there's a lot of evidence out there that gun control is ineffective and does not work. So uh, we definitely don't need to be pushing gun control bills. Well, I'm uh, observing the simplicity of your proclamation. We will not any enforce any law that is unconstitutional. Now to me, that's a no brainer because the Supreme Court has ruled in uh, Marbury versus Madison specifically, that any law that is repugnant to the constitution is null and void on its face. It's not even a law and yet, some legislators want to pass new laws at the state level to overturn the constitution or infringe upon our second amendment rights. And those laws you would consider are unconstitutional and therefore unenforceable. Um, who gets to decide if a law is unconstitutional? Is that part of your daily duties or is that something you have to wait for the courts to decide? Well, that is something that we'll have to wait uh, for the courts to decide. You know, the Heller case in Washington, D.C. said that the citizens there have the right to have a firearm with them to be able to protect themselves and not just a, uh, a common weapon, you know, that they could keep uh, uh, assault weapons or high capacity magazines or, or whatever they needed to to be able to adequately defend themselves. 
And our attorney general has also spoke out and said that uh, these uh, gun control bills are constitutional and they will be enforced. But I do not agree with that. And the constitutional sheriffs do not agree with that. And there's a lot of sheriffs that have that same position. Uh, a number of them have not uh, came out publicly. And, you know, that's their choice. But uh, I know that it's time for us to stand up. If we're not going to stand for our Second Amendment rights, then what are we going to stand for? Yes. Um, here in Colorado, we've had sheriffs on both sides of, for example, the red flag law. But our governor, Jared Polis, has sort of threatened some sheriffs and saying, well, maybe the sheriff ought to be the one uh, who is held uh, in, in contempt of the law if he won't enforce my edicts as governor of Colorado. Is there a conflict or is that something that uh, reasonable heads can, can negotiate and prevail? Uh, what would you do if, if you had a disagreement with Ralph Northam on a specific order? Well, obviously we're in a disagreement right now with these uh, proposed bills, but if it's unconstitutional and uh, we have discretion, we can either warn, summons, or arrest when it comes to a criminal violation. So if, the, if these laws are passed, we can use their discretion to do that. Now they did put language in the red flag law that it would be up to law enforcement and the Commonwealth attorney to have to be, uh, to pursue those search warrants and those red flag laws but I really have a problem with going to a house and what if no one is there? Are we supposed to kick in the door just to see what's on the other side? This is not a criminal offense. And I don't know if a magistrate can legally issue these search warrants if there's no criminal offense attached to it. I think we're really getting the cart before the horse in this case. With that, I am going to uh, give you the last word. Uh, we have just about 30 seconds left. Mention your website. What do you want the public to do or to know? No. I urge all of our citizens here in Virginia and across the country to call the legislators in Virginia that are patroning these bills. They're easily acceptable uh, on the General Assembly website. You know, contact the governor's office, email in writing, and do like 22,000 other people did just this past week. Visit your uh, legislator's office and sit there and look them in the eye, ask them how they're gonna vote on these bills and continue and visit the committee meetings and go to the Senate floor and the House floor when they vote on these bills, but don't quit fighting. We gotta stand up for our Second Amendment rights. Amen, amen. That is Sheriff Richard Vaughn. Our website is PrayInJesusName.org. Again, that's PrayInJesusName.org. Please donate when you visit. We'll see you next time. Today, I wanna to invite you to sign an important petition to Congress to protect military chaplains, especially their right to pray publicly in Jesus' name. If you remember my story, you know that I was vindicated by Congress in 2006 after I took a principled stand for the right to pray in Jesus' name. But Congress never did pass a positive law to let chaplains pray according to their conscience. Would you sign that petition with me? Let's take action today. Dr. Chaps needs your financial support to stay on the air. Would you please send your best donation today? Please visit PrayInJesusName.org to donate online. Or you can mail a check to Pray In Jesus Name Ministries, Post Office Box 77077, Colorado Springs, Colorado 80970. You can also call us toll free right now at 866-Obey-God. That's 866-O-B-E-Y-G-O-D. Please sign up for our free emails at PrayInJesusName.org. Again, that's PrayInJesusName.org.